Hello, and welcome to the latest installment of Law & Order, the video series where I look at and unpack stories from games. In this one, we'll be diving into the follow-up to Softstar's 2022 horror title The Bridge Curse Road to Salvation, and looking at the story behind The Bridge Curse 2, The Extrication. Overall, I really enjoyed the first game. It was based on a film of the same name which followed a group of students taking part in a Komodo Meshi test, which is basically a courage test undertaken by young people as a means to build courage by confronting suspected paranormal phenomena. However, The Bridge Curse 2 doesn't follow a film per se, it merely carries the franchise on and features a brand new standalone narrative and plot, which features very loose ties to the first game. Still, I really enjoyed this game just as much as I did the first. Now, given that this game has just released, I need to mention that there will be spoilers in this video for the game I'm about to talk about. I know, shock horror. But that's the intro done, let's begin. It's near to midnight on the 21st of August 2016, and former news anchor, now a reporter, Su Lian, is watching the Wenhua University Film Group's movie trailer, which had gone viral after they supposedly caught the hand of a real-life ghost on film. With the country currently celebrating Ghost Month or the Ghost Festival, Su speaks to her boss and says this is a perfect time to get an exclusive interview with the film group behind this creepy trailer. Naturally, she doesn't have an appointment, and the university won't exactly be keen on Sue's presence there, as her news outlet portrayed the university in a bad light regarding a missing persons case from the year 2000, when a student named Huang Ting Ting went missing. Truth is that Sue actually received a mysterious photograph of a safe, along with a message on the back of the photograph that said, Help me, and was apparently from Huang Ting Ting. Despite warnings from her boss, Sue proceeds into the university's Daren building. Taking the elevator up, she eventually finds the military instructor's office. She's been in contact with one of the film group, who is nicknamed Doc, and he has told her that she needs to obtain the key for the registrar's office. Avoiding the guard, Sergeant Huang, Sue finds a key for the office and goes to it. Finding some geometric shapes, she works out the code to the safe, and inside she finds a VHS tape, and the tape is titled The Elevator Incident, from the year 2000. Taken completely by surprise, Sue is scared by the sergeant. Mistaking her for a freshman at first, he soon discovers that she is a reporter. What's more is that he recognises her from her previous job as a lead anchor for the United News Corporation. Sue explains that she's there to interview some students. She suggests that she could interview him. He's reluctant, but he eventually comes round and agrees to tell her some stories about Wenhua University. He then hears a crash coming from outside the room and goes to check it out. He doesn't return, so Sue tries to track him down. She finds him in the canteen area, and he's acting suspiciously, trying to cover up a stain on the floor. After buying her a drink from the vending machine, he sits down for the interview. Showing him the video of Huan Ting Ting before her disappearance, he says that she was a good kid, and he says that he knew her. Changing the topic, talking about his job, Sue asks about the sergeant's relationship with his wife. He says that his wife died a long time ago in an accident. He pulls out a photograph of her and says that she used to work there at the university as a nurse. He thanks Sue for taking the time to listen and he takes her to the school's history room. On the way, he stops to honour Professor, who is a dog named Poody, who passed away in 1972. In the history room, Sue learns a bit more about the school, but she notices that a certain photo of the university being opened features a man whose features have been scratched out. Sue goes to take a photo, but the Sarge asks her not to take any with him in them. So, Sue takes pictures of some of the items displayed. The Sarge then realises the time. It's 11.34pm, approaching midnight, and he starts to hurriedly tell her that she needs to leave. Another crash from around the corner leads the Sarge away, and Sue takes her opportunity to enter into the screening room and watch the video, telling herself that she still has 17 minutes to go until midnight. She plays the tape. On it, she sees Huang Ting Ting inside the building's elevator on the eve of her disappearance. Ting Ting was acting very strangely. Fifteen minutes later, the tape shows Ting Ting returning to the elevator with a lantern, still acting strangely. Then, Sue sees a hand. The same hand from the viral movie trailer. Then, something happens. Sue leaves the room and grabs the oil lantern from the display case. It seems to be imbued with some kind of magic energy, and it lights itself. Then the lights in the building start flickering. The ghost of a woman says, help me, and then flies towards Sue. Holding the lantern up to the photo of the man with the face scratched out makes it warp and shift into something grotesque, slightly freaking Sue out. Using the lantern, she reveals echoes of time gone by. 
these ones seeming to reflect a young girl running away from someone or something. Words are written on the wall saying that he is a liar and the person is asking for help. Inside the elevator, after clearing a cloud of key energy, Su uncovers a yin yang symbol. At that moment, the clock hits midnight and something happens to the elevator. The power goes off and Su attempts to use the emergency call button. She begins to speak, but she hears the voice of Ting Ting, desperate for help. She also hears the voice of the Sarge too. Ting Ting speaks of a female ghost chasing her, wanting to eat her, and that there's blood everywhere and that the woman's neck is broken. She then screams, and the doors open. Sue steps out and finds herself in the kitchen. This ghost is known as the Necklace Consort, and using the lantern's energy as a way to repel the horrific entity, Sue hides and has to avoid the ghost. She manages to sneak around, removing clouds of key energy, eventually making a run for the elevator and to safety. Well, not really. The elevator somehow plummets to a floor that does not even exist. To B3. Going back to around an hour earlier, the focus now shifts to the Wenhua University film group. The director, Richie, a finance student and part of a wealthy and influential family, is under a lot of stress. Since the trailer went viral, he's now feeling the pressure to deliver a film that lives up to the hype. Not only that, he's scared about the ghost in the trailer. Their fellow student, who wrote the script named Ahai, doesn't seem at all phased about ghosts or spirits and suggests that they just get on with the film. Doc is there too. They talk about the fact that they have two weeks until the first screening of their film, so they go through various scenes and where everyone will be standing. The movie itself will be based upon the real-life 1960 Darren murder, which took place in the same building, and is to be titled The Hexed Building. It's a story involving the daughter of the founder of the university, Zhu Yu Yi, and her murder at the hands of her fiancé, the architect of the university, a man named Yan Shu Wen. They're going through their scene when Richie hears the sound of a young girl crying, coming from one of the storerooms. Desperate to prove his bravado to Ahai since he has a crush on her, he goes and checks it out. No, <laughs> After picking up the ballerina figurine and checking out the room, only to find absolutely no one in there, the three students go to another classroom and film a test run for their scene. Despite being concerned about having to be out by midnight, the university's policy, 
Richie hands the props out and they do their scene. Ahai gets a little freaked out at some point and then they realise that Richie hadn't pressed record on the camera, even though he could swear that he did. So they try again. Unsure of what the hell just happened to him, Richie comes to and finds himself in an unfamiliar place. This place appears to be from another world. He can't find his friends anywhere. Setting out to try and track them down, he enters the elevator. It takes him to a long hallway, and this hallway seems to transport him somewhere else. He enters into a game room and encounters a possessed doll who welcomes Richie as a contestant and to the House of Horrors. She speaks of someone else being there. She also mentions that this person wasn't scared of her. Richie needs to play hide and seek, and then the doll will tell him where Doc and Ahai are. The doll is using the computer screens to hide, and using a USB stick, Richie finds the doll three times, and the doll is pulled out of the computers and into the room. The doll speaks of a really scary ghost being down there. Richie attempts to console the sad doll, and she jumps at him and disappears. Moving on, following the green orb, Richie finds Doc in the women's bathroom. However, Doc has been possessed by the spirit from the doll. Doc had played the doll at the same game previously, and as a result lost and got possessed. Trying to slap the demonic out of him, Richie tries to make Doc see sense, but this does not work. A geezer with a lamp is mentioned, along with the fact that this geezer was there 30 years ago, and that he ensured that spirits would be trapped there in the university. The green orb opens up another games room, and there's another game to play. In this one, it says that solving three puzzles will allow the player to be granted anything that they wish. So, receiving a special key, Richie opens up three boxes and receives some blank papers, a decorative plate, and some sticky red liquid. A hidden door is opened in the game room, and this leads to a secret room with strange drawings on the walls and an altar, and on said altar is a special Ouija board. Going off of instructions, Richie places the items on the board and chants the words. He is answered by a spirit. The spirit was referred to by the games club as the Dark One, and it confirms that this is who Richie is speaking with. The spirit also refuses to let Doc and Ahai leave safely. However, it does allow Richie to find Ahai. The conversation ends and a passageway opens up underneath the altar. Doc goes flying down into it. Going down there, Richie finds Doc again in the elevator, which moves as soon as Richie is inside. Doc is no longer possessed, but after being slapped again, he freaks out and runs off. Going after him, Richie finds himself in another different area. He observes a shadow of a ballerina practicing her dancing. Moving on, he eventually comes to a dance studio and finds a broken music box. Doc is terrified and is hiding inside a locker. Approaching the dance studio, a ballet dancer shows up and is practicing. There's something that Richie needs from inside the studio, but he dare not disturb the dancer's practice. Careful to avoid her gaze, he sneaks through the dance studio and grabs the ballerina figure and places it into the music box. The ballerina freaks out but takes the bait, and this draws her away from the exit door. After Doc helps get the door open, there's a chase on, and the mad ballerina is angry. Nonetheless, Richie makes it to safety. After some fooling around with different masks on ballerina mannequins, Richie witnesses a ballerina using the very same Ouija board, meaning that they too summon the Dark One at some point. Able to exit the area, Richie ends up in front of an auditorium. After entering and picking up the missing head for the figurine he picked up earlier, Richie witnesses a performance by the mad ballerina.
After this, Richie has to survive by avoiding the mannequins. Eventually, the performance comes to an end, and joined by Doc, Richie heads onto the stage and witnesses another disturbing scene involving the death of the mad ballerina. What's more is that the mad ballerina's actions were being controlled and manipulated by the Dark One. A bunch of flowers are also on the stage along with the music box. Reattaching the head and placing the now complete ballerina figure into the music box sees the mad ballerina seemingly at peace along with another ballerina. They leave and see a high walking round with a lantern. They attempt to shout to her but to no avail as she cannot hear them. Progressing, Richie slips after a surface gives way, but despite Doc's best efforts, he falls a short way down. Whilst Richie has been going through all of that, Ahai has been busy too. When Richie spotted the dark figure in the camera, Ahai saw it too. It seemed to call out the name of the woman she was playing as if the dark figure was after her specifically. After Richie and Doc got whisked away to some other parallel world, Ahai was left there in the room, alone. Exiting the room, she has to flee from evil hands that are trying to grab her. She evades them, grabbing the lantern that Sue had dropped, and she enters into the elevator. As expected, creepy things start to happen, and the anima lantern lights up. The hands come through and touch her, and exiting the elevator, she seems to have been transported to 1963, another parallel reality when the university was still under construction. Ahai then spots the green orb, which disappears behind a locked door. Further down the hall, Ahai enters into another room, and she is inside the office of the university's founder, Wen Xiong. The green spirit shows Ahai a photograph of Yu Yi, Wen Xiong's daughter, and the woman who was murdered by the architect in 1960. Ahai is slightly freaked out as she herself bears a striking resemblance to the young woman. She also finds a proof of engagement between Yu Yi and Yan Shu Wen, along with a strange rock and a letter to Wen Xiong regarding the engagement of Yu Yi and Yan, along with a glowing endorsement from another gentleman who had introduced Wen Xiong to Yan in the first place. Ahai witnesses a flashback which sees Yu Yi essentially being forced to marry Yan, an arranged marriage. She tried to warn her father what Yan was like, but he was having none of it. Wen Xiong spoke of the rock Yan gave him, and he was almost mesmerized by it, saying it belonged to a high-ranking monk. Yu Yi comments how her father has changed, and she hands him a key to Yan's office so he can see what he's been up to, but he's not interested, instead admonishing his daughter. Afterwards, the key is on the desk now, so Ahai grabs it and gains entry to Yan's office. Yu Yi was right, Yan was up to something very shady. She also solves some puzzles that are clearly of a cult design, and this reveals a secret passage, leading to a back area. Ahai discovers a load of old surveillance equipment. Nyan was spying on people and trying to see what they were up to. Up a ladder into another hidden section, Ahai discovers the blueprints for the building dated 1959. Yan used something called Dark Geomancy in order to haunt the Duran building. Ahai surmised that the ghostly hands have something to do with Yan. Ahai hears a voice. Bizarrely, it's a previous echo of the Sarge. How is he there in 1963? Why does he look exactly the same? Either way, the Sarge sees all the equipment there and becomes very suspicious of what Yan is up to. Following the echo of the Sarge, Ahai follows him to the nurse's room, and another echo reveals the Sarge and the Daran building's nurse Tan Junmei were in love. Anyway, the Sarge reveals what he found in Yan's office and says it's dark magic, and he tells Junmei to be careful around him. After this, Ahai hears a phone conversation in which Yu Yi and Junmei agree to meet in the parking garage. Heading down to level B2 and uncovering various echoes, sees Ahai uncover a bloodstained shovel, a high heel covered in blood, and a bloodstain on the wall. These were all items from the murder of Yu Yi at the hands of Yan. Spotting another echo of the past, Ahai witnesses the brutal assault on Yu Yi. Yan talks about a magic circle being complete, and that when it is, he'll come for her. The nurse, Junmei, turns up as arranged and Yan hits her with the shovel too. Tragically, her head gets caught in the lift, and Yan is revealed to be the Dark One, the dark figure that Ahai encountered earlier on. He chases Ahai, saying that she is now Yu Yi. Avoiding the evil hands, Ahai is able to give the Dark One the slip. She is back in the elevator and back in 2016 again. She explores and hears a phone ringing. It's Su Lian's phone. She recorded herself being dragged away and tried to upload it, but the upload failed. Thinking she's nearby, Ahai looks around and finds a flower on her desk, but has to hide as the now evil sergeant roams around. He's mumbling and groaning, but he eventually leaves after picking up the flower Ahai dropped. Inside a safe, she finds what the sergeant placed inside, a key to the nurse's office. Thinking that this may be where the sergeant took Sue, Ahai goes there and finds a hidden passage. 
Inside the passage, she finds Sue's journalist identification, indicating that she's on the right track. Exiting the passage, Ahai finds herself in another rundown area of the university. Hearing a bang from above the ceiling tiles, she investigates. Having to run and hide from the necklace consort and find a way to open up some doors, Ahai makes it to the other side, but is attacked by the necklace consort. She is rescued by a still alive Sue, who throws some flowers at the ghost, and they both make it to safety. A short ways down the corridor they see another ghost. This one is friendly, and Sue says that this is the ghost of Huan Ting Ting, the girl who went missing in the year 2000. Sue says that her spirit has been helping her escape. She is directing them towards a strange room. Inside the room is a massive plinth, and an echo reveals that Huang Ting Ting entered into this room before she went missing. A door opens and proceeding further into the corridor, a rumbling occurs, similar to an earthquake. She finds a strange shape and uses it to make up the yin yang symbol, and this opens up another door. Inside this one, there are a bunch of symbols and seals. In the middle is something known as the Circle of Wu. Placing the lantern onto a plinth powers the circle up, and inside the circle, they see the Dark One. The spirit has clearly been locked away, and for good reason. A door opens, and out of the darkness comes the evil Sarge. So let's see what Doc and Richie were up to. Well, after Richie's fall down to the level below, he and Doc gather themselves and push on, eventually coming into contact with the green orb again. The orb reveals a series of drawings and markings on a wall which appear to depict an entity being locked away in the university. Finding another strange room, Doc and Richie extinguish some candles in order to open a door. Doc receives a call from his great uncle who is a priest at a temple. He's not very happy and tells Doc that he's messing with stuff he shouldn't. Whilst telling Doc to leave the place, the line goes dead. Richie and Doc get separated and finding a way around, Doc comes to an electrical room. He needs to power two sectors up in order to open a big door the exit, but this is made all the more difficult by the presence of the angry evil Sarge. Escaping him, Doc proceeds further down the hallway and comes across another strange room. In this one, Doc has to match elements to the elements that defeat them, for example water beats fire, and this opens up the exit door. Progressing further again shows Doc that the previous wall markings have been altered by the Dark One in an attempt to distort what they actually mean. Ahai calls Doc, and she says that the seal trapping the evil spirit cannot be broken. A little further along, following the green orb, Doc comes across Richie. He seems to have been tricked into performing a ritual by the Dark One. He's being manipulated and has marks on his arm to show for it. Anyway, Richie has inadvertently released the Dark One from the Circle of Wu. The green spirit was the Dark One all along, and that is what has tricked them into releasing the Dark One. Richie snaps out of it, but it's too late, as the Dark One, now manifesting as true darkness, is released. <laughs> And they run for it while being chased through various hallways. Doc and Richie unite with Sue and Ahai. They need to go, but Richie bravely tries to close the door, but is gravely injured by the monster. Ahai runs towards Richie, getting trapped inside with the monster and the Sarge. Ahai, well passed out, sees a memory belonging to Yu Yi, and that she didn't die straight away, but she was gravely injured. After spotting his deceased wife, the Sarge carried Yu Yi away. This memory merges into Ahai's own vision, and the Sarge has carried her away and places her down. The Sarge says that he didn't expect her to come back, saying it must be fate. He says that the lamp will protect Ahai's soul, and that she should hold on to it. The Sarge says that the seal has been broken and they don't have much time, and a call from Sue and Doc reveals that they are both fine. 
Heading into the elevator, Ahai and the Sarge descend to level B3, the level that should not even exist. Passing the stricken corpse of Ting Ting, Ting Ting's spirit asks them to save them all. Finding a strange sculpture, Ahai uses it to create a shadow, and this opens up a doorway and this leads to a place known as the Gate of Chaos. The gate itself cannot be opened until two items are recovered, the Eye of the Diting and Yan Shu Wen's Corrupted Heart. Heading to one side of the chaotic ruins, Ahai spots something behind a large and fancy door. Removing some seals and avoiding the monster, Ahai manages to get the door open and grabs the first piece, the Eye of the Diting. Heading to the other side after another encounter with the monster, she heads into what is the final resting place of Yan Shu Wen. His corrupted heart, the core of the Dark One, is inside his coffin with his body, glowing, and after a chase, Ahai returns to the Gate of Chaos and places both items into the Diting statue on the gate. Now there are two endings to the game, one good and one bad. The lamp is actually the important item in obtaining either a good or bad ending. In the good ending, if Ahai managed to successfully avoid the monster, Sarge picks up the lantern. Now that the Dark One is gone and giving Ahai the prayer beads given to him by his wife, with all of his affairs in order and wanting to be reunited with his wife, the Sarge heads through the gate with the lantern, telling Ahai to go and live her life. After this ordeal, Ahai and Doc finished the film, and she is also working on a script for a film to honour the Sarge and his story. Watching the film in the screening room, Sue also shows up with flowers, saying that she wanted to be there. She reveals that everyone thinks that Richie simply disappeared, and the game then ends. In the bad ending, if Ahai got caught too many times and uses the lamp to repel the monster, therefore breaking the lamp, this means that there is no light source to guide her while she's going through the gate of chaos. This also means that despite the Dark One being gone for good, Ahai will end up forever lost in the netherworld, unable to find her way back. After this, Sue, despite being very busy, makes time to keep in touch with Doc, who is still trying to find clues in the university in order to try and find Ahai, and Sue visits him at the university. Going to the screening room, they watch the film which Doc finished in order to honour Richie and Ahai, and then Sue leaves. In the parking garage, however, she receives a strange phone call from Ahai. The game then ends. Okay, so as usual, there's a lot to dive in here and elaborate on, but let's start with Wenhua University itself. In the history room, Sue learns that Wenhua University was founded in 1955 by a man named Zhu Wenjiang. Some of you eagle-eyed players out there will recognise the name from the first game. In the first game which took place in Donghu University, we learned that the students of Donghu were essentially competing with the other universities. At some point, Ji from the first game actually contacts Ahai and warns her that she and her film club should be careful, and mentions that something happened to his group of friends in February of that same year. Anyway, according to the building's history, the Daren building was named after the ideals of perseverance and fortitude. The hope was that students would take on these principles. The location of the university was ideal, limited distractions as it was based in the mountains and sat upon approximately 165 acres of land being comprised of four different schools. The fact that it was sat on a colossal amount of yin and yang energy is significant, as the core principle of yin and yang is that everything needs to be in harmony. They are opposites, yet they complement each other. Two separate parts needed to make one whole. It's a complicated topic, but I'd be eager to hear your thoughts on yin and yang, and more specifically how it ties into this story, so leave a comment below with your thoughts. 
Spooky stuff would start happening every year at the same time, in conjunction with the seventh month of the lunar calendar. Anyway, the university would obviously hit the headlines when in July 2000, a young student Huang Ting Ting would go missing. The university were desperate to save face and doctored the surveillance footage, keeping the master tape locked away in a safe. But let's move on now and look into the architect. The architect for the university, Yan Shu Wen, was an award-winning architect who, after working in the UK, had gone back home in order to try and prove himself to the Yan family, who are a long line of successful architects themselves. They disapproved of his new and unique method of using Feng Shui and his departure from the traditional architecture. One day, Zhu Wenjiang was introduced to Yan Shu Wen and he instantly took a liking to him, so much so that he considered him a perfect suitor to marry his daughter, Zhu Yu Yi. Wen Zhong had been preparing for this as he'd already previously sent Yu Yi off to a bridal academy in 1955, and there she was able to learn all the things that would make her a good wife and a good mother. The first time Yan saw Yu Yi, he was infatuated. As a result of Wen Zhong's fondness for Yan, he was chosen to be the architect for the design of the university. Yan gifted Wen Zhong with a strange stone, which actually possessed some form of dark energy. The university was built by Yan, who was specialized in the practice of Feng Shui, also known as Chinese Geomancy, which uses the forces of energy to tune people into their surrounding environment. It utilizes the five elements, earth, metal, water, wood, and fire, and these elements come from the Taoist tradition, with Taoism being the way of nature. The energy map of Feng Shui is known as Bagua, a Chinese word meaning eight areas. And you may have seen in the game that the university had eight trigrams, which was seen in the elevator when uncovered by the lantern. Now these were to be built in a specific order, and this would serve to drive out evil spirits using yin and yang energy. However, Yan had something far more sinister planned for the university. In the conversation with the sergeant, he's telling Sue about the design of the building, and says that the direction and angles of the eight trigrams need to be aligned perfectly, but that in the case of Wen Hua, these angles were purposely reversed by Yan. The builders then got to work in constructing it, none the wiser. This action would draw in the evil energy and keep it trapped there inside the building, meaning that anyone trapped there is now stuck there as a ghost or a spirit and is unable to move on or escape. He would research and construct bone and blood arrays which used corpses and skeletons of people that died tragic deaths. This resulted in the creation of extremely powerful evil spirits. In this notebook, Yan states that he needed a border between two regions that were rich in yin and yang energy, and that the yin energy gathers in front of the gate of chaos. He also mentioned that he would apply this formation to himself. So let's discuss the mysterious character that is the Sarge. Now, it turned out that he worked at the university as early as 1960. During his time there working as the military instructor, he was a popular person, and he grew especially fond of the Durham building's nurse, Jun Mei, and the two eventually got married. He mentions to Su Lian that it took him ages to win her over. He was originally working in another building and got transferred to the Durham building after its construction was completed. And the two fell in love and they'd write letters to one another and he'd give her flowers. She would give him some prayer beads too as a way for him to be safe at night. But then the unthinkable happened. Jun Mei was killed in an accident. As with the other people that died there, her spirit was stuck there, unable to leave. And the Sarge would vow to keep working there at night in order to keep students safe and also to try and help his wife's spirit escape. Sergeant Huang mentioned that he'd spent a lot of time there alone. During one of the conversations, he seemed to demonstrate a lot of knowledge in regard to Feng Shui and the spiritual nature of it. This is a result of him being there for so long that he tried to find out as much information as he could about what Yan had done. Another thing that alludes to how long Sergeant Huang has been at the university is the display regarding Pudi the dog. Apparently, the Sarge used to try and reconcile Pudi and his arch nemesis, the Black Cat, and this was way back prior to 1972, which was the year Pudi died. He was also around during the 1960 murder too, meaning that he's been there for decades, probably for around 56 years. The prayer beads his wife gave him helped him maintain his sanity and his humanity, but as we see in the game, he eventually succumbed to the evil influence of the Dark One at some point and mutated into a horrific demonic form. He seems unable to control this form at times, as we see him multiple times throughout the game using these two different forms. Now let's look at what happened during the 1960 murder, or I should say murders. As we've already discussed, Yu Yi wasn't too keen on marrying Yan. She had an inkling of what he was up to and she tried to tell her father, but he refused to listen to her. 
As we saw in Ahai's chapter, Yu Yi bought Wen Jiang the key to Yan's office and told him to look for himself, but instead, Wen Jiang shouted at Yu Yi for stealing the key. Truth is that the strange stone that Yan gave to Wen Jiang was actually cursed, and was the reason that Wen Jiang was seemingly infatuated with Yan. Yan also kept a voodoo doll in his safe, ensuring that Wen Jiang was to be his puppet for as long as he needed him. During Ahai's journey through the under-construction Daren building, she witnesses an echo of the Sergeant Junmei. Junmei is talking about her concern that Wen Zhong is setting Yu Yi up to marry Yan, and the Sarge isn't happy about it at all. In a phone conversation between the two, we see that Yu Yi stated that Yan wants to talk about them ending their engagement, and Yu Yi is obviously happy about this, and says that Yan will meet her in the parking garage at midnight, but of course, this was just a ruse. Yu Yi wanted Junmei to meet her there too. Prior to Yan's assault on Yu Yi, it seems that he tried to present her with a red envelope with money in it, and this signifies love between two parties. It's likely that Yu Yi threw this envelope to the floor and ran off, telling Yan that she refuses to marry him. This is when the murders take place. Yan hits Yu Yi with the shovel, and then as Junmei turns up, he hits her and she dies too, becoming the vengeful spirit known as the Necklace Consort. It's not clear as to what exactly happened to Wen Xiong after, but he passed away in 1970. He resigned as the school's principal in 1960 after the death of his daughter, but as for Yan, well, it appears that he went missing after the murders. The official report is that he fled, however, he states that he will use his formation of blood and bones on himself, which I guess resulted in his death, but we'll get to what happened to his body shortly. So if you haven't put it together already, the necklace consort is Sergeant Huang's wife the nurse, Tan Jun Mei. After she was hit in the face by Yan with the shovel, her head got trapped in the elevator, but it didn't fully separate her head from her body. Therefore, she became the necklace consort and her head was, well, it was just dangling. But here's the dark part. It seems, but this never directly confirmed, that Sergeant Huang was feeding the necklace consort. This explains him cleaning things up in the canteen area. As if Su Lian visits the canteen before bumping into the sergeant, she can find blood and bones on the floor, indicating that the necklace consort had been there feeding. Later on, Sergeant Huang instead hid the bones inside a cooking pot and cleared up the blood. The consort was originally confined to the abandoned infirmary wards behind the nurse's office, but eventually got out and ruined the Daren building itself. When Su fully encounters the necklace consort for the first time, there seems to be livestock in the kitchen, indicating that she has been feeding on livestock from the mountains. But that's just a theory. An old exchange diary shows that Huang had been writing to his wife, becoming frustrated at not being able to find a way to liberate his wife's spirit from the Daren building. He would visit her, but her spirit became more and more evil over time, to the point that he'd bring her flowers in order to try and calm her down, as the flowers had a strange effect on her. One question is, why would the university knowingly keep the full tape of what happened to Huang Tingting Ting from the police? Well, it's because they knew the place was haunted by evil spirits. Decades beforehand, the school hit the point that they needed to bring in outside help. This help came in the form of Taoist priests from the Annan Palace. Their job was to get rid of the demon. They brought with them the Anima Lantern, which is a lantern adorned with religious symbology and can protect the holders from evil spirits. However, this lantern initially came with a warning that it was not to be used unless absolutely necessary, and also not to become reliant on the lantern either. It seems that the priests were inside the building when it was still under construction, as one note on the wall in the still under construction Daren building states that people keep dying. They resort to placing nine incense sticks into a burner, as these nine sticks signify that more spiritual help is needed in order to deal with whatever spirit needs dealing with. In other words, the priests were struggling, as due to Yan's knowledge of Feng Shui and Geomancy, they were up against a demon who knew every trick in the book. They tried to cast the demon out, but the demon was way too strong. With hope running out, the priests came up with one last thing. After their master sacrificed himself to seal away the demon, the other priests buried Yan's body in the chaotic ruins near to the Gate of Chaos. They wrapped his corrupted heart in talismans and sealed it inside the coffin along with his body. They locked the Eye of the Diting behind an ornate door. Then they created four seals. These were designed to keep the demonic entity locked away for eternity until future generations could figure out exactly how to get rid of him. They then created a secret core called the Circle of Wu, and this would hold the seal for a long, long time. And their hope was that someone would be able to open the Gate of Chaos before the seal loosened completely. They left a wall drawing so that anyone who saw it could know what was lurking down there, lying dormant. But the Dark One was patient, biding his time. He would wait for the seals to fade, 
tricking people into giving up their souls such as the mad ballerina and using their deaths as a way to make himself even stronger through blood sacrifices. The moment Richie communicated with the Dark One, his life was essentially forfeit. The mark on his arm that Doc saw showed that his time was running out. On another note, the strange areas with the chain seem to be their own parallel realities, which is also likely why Ahai couldn't hear Doc and Richie shouting to her despite being within earshot. Also, the strange rooms with the plinths and seals were seemingly mirrored, as when Doc extinguishes candles, the door opens for Ahai and Sue. So the mad ballerina was named Li Yu Hong. She wasn't always mad, but the events of her life culminated in her becoming the mad ballerina after many frustrations and disappointments. She was one of twins, with her sister Li Yu Ping also being a talented ballerina. Even more so, actually, as Li Yu Ping always got chosen to be something known as the principal dancer. Essentially, she was the lead dancer, and the other ballerinas would merely support her. She was the star. Li Yu Ping won countless trophies thanks to her impressive gift. Li Yu Hong yearned to be the principal dancer. She would practice and practice and practice, but she would never be as good as her sister. And this grew a bitterness inside her. One day, Li Yu Hong got the chance to audition for principal dancer, but once again, her sister won it. Whilst her family members celebrated in the next room with her sister, Li Yu Hong was filled with rage and resentment. This also culminated in her classmates bullying and taunting her for being a loser, as she didn't get the role she wanted. One chance conversation with the students in the games room at the university led her to discover the Ouija board that could grant anyone what they wanted, but at a cost. She invited the Dark One in and said that she yearned to be principal dancer, so the Dark One made that happen. Li Yu Hong had essentially sold herself to the Dark One. During her performance, as we see in the events of the game, the evil demonic spirit grabbed her ankle during her performance, causing her to fall, leading to her piercing her eye on a loose nail on the floorboard and blinding her. This was too much for Li Yu Hong to take, and she checked out from life after what she went through had become too much to bear. As a result of her dying in the university, this meant that her spirit was trapped inside it, and she would be stuck there in a loop, reliving the horrific memories of her final dance, over and over and over again. This was until she was reunited with her sister by Richie during his time in the other world. In terms of the Dark One, well, he's already immortal, so time isn't an issue. However, he didn't have to wait long at all. The Dark One, or Yan's obsession with Yu Yi, didn't die. In fact, his obsession with her only grew, but unfortunately so did his fury at her rejection of him. During the game, we see that Ahai was experiencing some pretty strange stuff during her time in the Daren building. But here's the crazy part. Ahai is basically Yu Yi, reborn. That's why she says that she looks similar to Yu Yi in Wen Xiong's office when looking at the photo of her. She has flashbacks of being Yu Yi, such as the Sarge carrying her while she was dying. She mentions that although she's never met the Sarge, she recognizes him. She also senses and hears something behind her during their practice, but sees that there's no one there. Then of course that something shows up in their second run. It could be fate that brought Ahai to that exact university, to the film club, and to write a script in regard to Yu Yi's murder in 1960. It could have been fate that the gods wanted her to resolve something known as karmic ties from her past. It seems to make sense that after the Sarge came across Yu Yi dying in the hallway, she didn't actually die there in the Daren building, meaning that her spirit wasn't trapped there, which is how her soul and her spirit were able to be reborn through Ahai. The Dark One of course realised this and did everything he could to deceive her and lead her into his trap and it almost worked. But that's pretty much it for this video, I thoroughly enjoyed playing this game. If you want to check it out for yourself, I'll leave a Steam link down in the description, and hopefully we'll get another game soon. I'm guessing it may be about the third university named here, as there were three universities competing with each other in Ghost Month, but we'll see. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, but for now, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.